So what does it take for a man to value and respect a woman? And so the title of this is 95% of high value men respect women. And we'll talk about high value in a moment. I want to dive into this because lately, well, lately, what I mean is the last few years, I've, I've witnessed a lot of content out in the YouTube universe, particular, particularly from the younger generation, but this bleeds into the midlife demographic as well. There's this belief that there's women are, because of the feminist movement and because of social media and a variety of different things, that women have become incredibly entitled and there's a whole movement of men going their own way, men going their own way, whatever that means to them. You can go your own way all you want, but you know what? Life is better, at least for us heterosexual people with women, at least for us men, I think it's that way and for women, the same thing. So what's going on here between men and women is a lot of disrespect going on because there's practically a gender war going on. There's this men against women, women against men, you know, there's all this conversation that men are, you know, narcissistic and they're using women and, and men feel like women are unappreciative and dismissive and, and promiscuous. Oh my God, there's so much conversation about how women seem to be promiscuous these days. So, so I want to kind of lean into a conversation of what it takes for actually men and women to respect each other. So I know the title says 97% of high value men respect women who know this, but let's just be clear. What I'm about to say goes for both genders, okay? Now, what occurs to me is what's lacking within a lot of human beings is self-respect. So let's start with this in the conversation, that when an individually genuinely respects themselves, they will naturally be respected by other people. Well, I shouldn't say naturally, because a wounded person, an emotional or an unhealed person, certainly they don't respect themselves because they're in pain. They're in some level of pain. And within that pain, there might be a lot of self-crucifixion going on and self-destruction and sabotage, sabotageal, I'm trying to think of a word that kind of relates to sabotaging behavior going on. Can I be candid with you? I've done things to self-sabotage a relationship. Um, I've done stupid things that hurt other people. My wounded little kid has done it a lot of stupid things in our life. So we are not immune to, to our wounds and traumas. And by the way, when it comes to traumas, when it comes to wounds, this isn't about something gigantic that happened in your life. You know, we, we think of childhood wounds as some things really significant, like, um, you know, physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, you know, truly even heinous things certainly have happened to children. But let me tell you something. I was bullied as a kid in school. I was picked on as a kid in school. You know, we wouldn't put that into the same category of sexual abuse, but I'm going to say that was incredibly traumatic. I was abused. I'm sure many of you can relate to that on some level. And so while it isn't this you know, tragic kind of experience, had a, I'm, I'm even reluctant to say the word tragic, overly traumatic, it still had a deep effect on me. I had a school teacher who called me stupid in front of the classroom. I mean, the fact that I even talk about it, but I only bring it up in the context of illustrating a point. I'd like to think I've gotten past it, but the wound that happened from that caused me to lose respect within myself. And so self-respect is kind of one of the most important, is that a value? I, I want to say one of the most important ingredients for any person to have respect from another human being. So I want to invite you all to start doing a deeper dive into healing childhood wounds and adult traumas. And by the way, one of the most significant adult traumas that probably uh, is I was going to use the word afflicted 
experienced by 75% of singles in the over 45 category is divorce. Divor going through a divorce is an incredibly traumatic event. A breakup is an incredibly traumatic event. You're unraveling the tapestry of a life you had with another human being. And in a moment's notice, that can be gone. Oh, and let's not forget the loss of a loved one. Um, I, it's interesting. I have had three conversation with prospective clients who are all widowed. You know, they lost their husband some to cancer, some to accident, and some of them very young to just a, um, I don't want to share it publicly, but an, uh, an accident. That's a very, you know, so divorce, losing someone, even a breakup in relationship, you go from a we to like all of a sudden you're me. And that can be a very humbling experience. It can be a very um, traumatic experience. And in those moments, we might sabotage our own lives through drugs, through alcohol, through excessive sex, through being out of integrity. These are all ways we lose self-respect and it's gonna be difficult to experience respect from another human being if we don't respect ourselves. So first thing, know this, self-respect, just know it. I mean, invite that into your life. God, universe, spirit, I invite more self. I'd laugh a little bit. I invite more self-respect. I'm laughing because inner work can also be fun and play too. Let me just say that. It can be fun and play too. Okay. So the other component is emotional maturity. See, what is a high value person? First off, folks, let me just say this. It's a lame label high value, high quality. I mean, quite frankly, the only reason why I put that in the title is you're more apt to click on it. You know, it's, you know, if I put the title I'd like to put down, you guys wouldn't click on it. You need to be a clickbait to click on this video. And my hope is please tell me if you get value from my videos, even if they're clickbaity and title. So what makes one human being respect another human being? Emotional maturity. You know, I've said this before, I'll say it again. We are swimming in a sea of emotional dysfunctionality. I mean, the number one emotional health crisis in the world, well, at least in the United States, I can only pick on the United States because we are a really bunch of self-centric, um, moronic human beings, <laughs> okay? I'm sorry, that's just the way I see it. We are, I mean, I, I really respect some of the other uh, European uh countries because they are so not as self-absorbed and self-evolved, at least some of the people that I've observed, the way Americans are. I mean, the way we are addicted to the, and I know it's around the world too, but, you know, in, in, in impoverished country, impoverished countries, you know what they have to worry about? Putting food on the table. They don't have to worry about how much makeup you have on, how many likes you got on your social media. And so they are more concerned with basal needs. And quite frankly, you know what? I wonder if they actually don't have a better life than this chaotic emotional construct we have here in the United States. But coming back to the number one emotional health issue is I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable and I'm not likable. Like, I mean, I witness this over and over and over again when I go to workshops and I go to trainings. And we are also a very lonely country. I mean, we are a population of isol isolationists. I mean, you know, you're, you're at 18 years old, get the hell out of the house, you know, is practically the narrative for us baby boomers and Gen Xers were raised with. But also we don't, we don't, we don't support each other in community or tribe or very few people do. Okay. Now, why does this have to relate to this title? Because Emotional maturity in, uh, expand, expands, is um, not expands, uh, encompasses so much of how a person operates in the world, including that self-respect. And in a moment, I'm going to outline five core things that demonstrate emotional maturity, which I believe a high value man, let me give you a wink, high value man respects. The only reason for the wink is look. We should just treat every human being as a person, 
just a person. Can we take out the penis, vagina, genders, and all this and just treat human beings like people and not class them by high value or low value or this or that? Although I'm guilty of bagging on people. I've repeatedly told uh, my audience here how many low chakra human beings out there. That means that they're ruled by their, their genitals more than anything else, but that's another conversation. So what demonstrates emotional maturity? I'm going to share with you five things that I think are on, on the list, and there could be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 100. But number one, a man respects a woman. And a woman respects a man whose actions consistently match their words. And they operate from a level of rational thinking versus dramatic thinking, okay? In other words, the actions match their words. I guess I'm putting two together, so there's going to be more than five. Actions matching words. You know, women confuse the hell out of me sometimes. I mean, they there can be times where they say one thing and they mean something completely different. And so their actions don't correspond with their words. You guys are sometimes, it's like trying to figure out reading hieroglyphics at times. Actions matching words. And by the way, this is true for men too. You, If any of the men are watching right now, guys, stop being jackasses and saying one thing and doing another. Don't tell a woman you want a relationship and then say, I'm not ready for a relationship. That's just fucking bullshit. And I can go on and on with the list of things you guys say. You, there are a lot of you that are ruled by your lower chakra. You're ruled by your penis. And that's not fair. That doesn't, doesn't demonstrate character. You know, a fundamental piece of character at least in the dating, mating, and relating realm, is commitment is a is a is a quality inherent within a person who has character. In other words, you don't engage in trivial relationships for your own satisfactions. That's not a that's not a that's not a gentleman. Let's call it. Let's just say that's not a gentlemanly act. When you're only out for your own needs, a true gentleman, a person whose actions match their words is actually looking out for the other person. That's, that's, that's what a decent human being should be. And just because you can disguise it in the guy's like, and I am guilty of this. You're very upfront. I don't want a relationship with you, but I'll have sex with you. You know, women will, at least I'm speaking to the guys out there. And by the way, women do this to men too. You put them in their friend zone thinking they have a chance. And a woman and a man will say, I don't want a relationship with you, but we'll have sex with you. And the woman thinks there's a chance, but you know, clearly she's only doing it for that reason. That lacks a level of respect, character, gentlemanliness, all that good stuff. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell. And by the way, if you want to connect with me in the description below, you can schedule a discovery call with me. You can get a copy of my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's links below to connect with me. Number two, I can't stand victim consciousness. Oh my God, I want to far at the amount of victim consciousness people are suckling on this nipple this nipple of victim consciousness victim consciousness you're suckling on it like we are all like look i'm sorry you are in a relationship with someone that hurt you i am gent i'm sorry you felt hurt by somebody else okay but when you're swim when you are when you are repeating that narrative over and over and over and over and over and over again, you are in victim consciousness. See, a man, high value man, again, this has to relate to the title, high value man or woman has the greatest amount of respect for somebody who's in victor consciousness. Do you guys get this? I mean, you guys really fucking understand this thing about victor consciousness? In other words, Whatever happened in your life, on some level, you were a participant in it, whether you liked it or not. 
Now, I know you can give me a couple examples where that doesn't exist, but I say genuine, generally speaking, even if you were at the narcissist for 20 years, 19 years and 19 or 19 years and 12 or 11 months, you could have got out. Okay. So victor consciousness is fucking sexy. Okay. It goes beyond respect. It's sexy. Number three, you know how to fight fair. You know how to fight fair. And what I mean to say is humans are terrible at conflict resolution. You women are just as bad at, you've got terrible conflict resolution skills. You women have terrible listening skills. You women are all about being right, just like the men, okay? If you ever go to a couple's therapist uh, office, this is what happens. It's her fault. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's his fault. And all you guys do is focus on what's wrong. Let me tell you, the antidote to a lot of suffering uh, is gratitude. That is the antidote to a shitload of suffering is when you can be in a space of gratitude. And I say this as a person who lost a child. There's a picture of Connor right there. I, one of my favorite pictures of Connor. And this is my son who passed away. You see that? He was, he was a kid that beat to his own drum. You know how I grieve? I grieve through gratitude. I am grateful for the 19 years and a couple months he uh, was in my life. I'm in gratitude over that little shit. And while I'm sad and I've cried and it's been painful, I don't, I, can, I don't have to grieve with suffering. I can grieve with love and love is just an extension of gratitude. And so, okay, what's this do with fighting fair? Folks, learn to take ownership on your part. And if you're not good at these skills, then go learn these skills. I just finished a workshop with Allison Armstrong. If you're not familiar with their work, it's called The Queen's Code. Ladies, you may want to read this book. Now, it's got some traditional overtones to it. I'm not going to say it's perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. Even my book has some flaws to it, okay? I found out later, but uh, <laughs> uh, I loved her work. I was just in a workshop, and she was teaching couples how to communicate better. She was teaching, excuse me, men and women, I should say, not couples, teaching how to communicate better. You ladies think you're good at communicating because you have the propensity to vomit emotions. By the way, we call that drama. When you vomit your emotions, we see that as drama, 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 drama. Learning how to fight fair. In other words, State your point of view without being right and listen to my point of view without saying I'm wrong. We all have a point of view. Number four, empathy. You know, coming back to this self-centric society we live in here, you know, empathy isn't just about I can feel your feelings. You know, empathy is also your feelings matter to me. Your feelings matter to me. I mean, in other words, that's the real essence of, of, of empathy in my book. It's not just I can feel your feelings. Your feelings matter to me. In other words, we men, our feelings fucking matter, okay? But you all, so many of you ladies will say how we are wrong with our feelings. And you're doing a disservice for yourself if you want to be respected. And last but not least, this fifth one, transparency. Ladies, we are not mind readers. If you want something from us, be specific. Just be specific, be detailed. We can't figure out. You don't hints don't work. Be deliberate. If you have like if you have something to say, then say it succinctly. We have a we respect you more, we will cherish you more, we will love you more if you're direct and succinct because we can't read your minds. And let me tell you something, if we did something three months ago that you didn't like and you're telling us now, shame on you. Well, well, if you're critical about it, shame on you. If it's this is your time to share, then do it from an honest, sincere place of mutual growth for one of us because it's bullshit. 
this this stonewalling of stuff. If you've got an issue, bring it up in the present. That's the best time to work stuff. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. So coming back to respect, what you need to know, start with self-respect first and foremost. And second, and most importantly, become an emotional grown-up. You're going to have a better chance of having a really juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship if you learn how to be an emotional grown-up. And by the way, 97% of people think they're an emotional grown-up. And trust me, you're not that grown-up. All right. I'm, I spouted a lot of stuff. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. If it resonated with you, if you disagree, if you have something to share, please post it in the comments below. And again, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell. And also all the links below to connect with me in the variety of ways. All right. If you have a question, write the word question, then post the question there after. Or you can purchase a super sticker, super chat. There's a little dollar sign in the chat box. All the monies from the super sticker, super chat goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. That's a picture of him right there. We just talked about him. That's his brother in the other picture. My son who passed away over five years ago in his honor, we donate to causes like the Hoffman Process and Insight Institute, just to name a few. Our goal tonight is $50. $50 tonight is our goal. We'd like to give away some money. I think we've collected in the last few weeks about three or $400. So I've got some donating to do. So if you have a question, write the word question or purchase that super. Oh, and if you're watching the replay, hit the super thanks button as well. Lisa wants to say, amen. Listen to Jonathan. <laughs> mm. Hey, does anyone remember who giving me this mug? Just keep swimming. That's what I say when I'm looking for questions. Let's keep swimming. Let's keep swimming. Uh, Elizabeth says, I'm moved by your story, Jonathan. I think about you and Connor like he's speaking to me from another dimension. Oh, my God. There's no doubt in my mind Connor speaks to me in a variety of different ways. So some of you might know that yesterday I had my... Um, okay, so my... My relationship with Marie ended about three months ago, and I I had a I had a witch come over and sage the place. I'm just kidding; she's not a witch. Um, I just said that for fun. But um, she saged the place. Uh, in other words, we cleansed all the energy of my previous relationship, and I stake a claim in this new place. Um, I'm sharing this with you because. Many of you are harboring, I'll do a video on this. Many of you are harboring so much angst over a, a, tra a relationship that ended and it is blocking you from attracting love in your life. So many of you are blocked from attracting love because you're stuck in some old relationship. And I invite you to do some work centered for that. Okay, we have a question that came in. Lisa, or Lisa wants to know, do men do yoga classes? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. In fact, I used to go to a yoga class in Westwood and Brentwood, California. And um, this is the middle of the day. I think it was like 60, 40 women to men. So yeah, men do yoga classes. I mean, you know, women tend to do it more. Women tend to do it more in the day because, um, I mean, a lot of people are working so but yeah men do yoga classes absolutely i used to do yoga i'm just not folks i'm just not good at yoga i just get bored with it i like walking the beach and riding my bike on the beach okay don't forget purchase the super sticker super chat we have a question from the magic entertainer do you think it's okay for a woman to have a casual sexual relationship with a man while she looks for the right person I mean, still date other people. You know, I have mixed feelings about this. I think if you want your, if you want your energy clean. So I was at a workshop today and I literally, or the other day, and I was proposed, I was literally two women proposed, literally a desire to have a sexual encounter with me. Okay. And my, my, my lower chakra, my penis loved the idea of it. 
but I want my energy clean. I, I literally feel so strongly that I don't want to become physically intimate with someone unless it's going to be my life mate. Like that's what I want to reserve that energy for. So I'm just sharing with my own personal experience, Magic Entertainer. I have been in that space of I've had friends with benefits while I date, but it hasn't worked out. I think when your energy is clean, you have a greater chance for success. You know, it sucks. You know, you know, the hardest thing humans have to do, we are again coming back to Americans who are so fucking impatient. You want patience from men, you want that from men. Well, then I invite you to be patient as well. But again, you're a grown up. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to follow my suggestion here. I'm just giving you, by the way, folks, I'm just giving a perspective here. This isn't, if it feels like a, tr there's, I don't know if there is even truth. What is truth? But I, I, I need to get into a philosophical conversation. Do what's right for you. Okay. Kathleen says, you are so angry today. Women are not succinct. <laughs> Am I angry, folks? <laughs> I'm just, I'm hyper. I'm not angry. I don't feel like this is anger. I'm saddened by, I'm saddened that we are in a construct of myopic thinking. I'm just, I'm, I'm really, what you're really see, seeing from me is sadness that is overflowing out of me. It's, it, there is a, a frustration, if you will. So I, I would own that, but I don't, I'm, by the way, I, if you call this anger, <laughs> I find that funny because I've been around people who are angry and I am scared shitless when I'm around people who are angry. I am not, I don't think I'm scary. I'd like to think I'm funny more than anything. Uh, Magic Entertainer says a witch just in time. Exactly. Halloween coming. Uh, let's keep going. Do we have a question? Write the word question and post the question there after. Let's keep going. Okay, here we go. Elizabeth's in the house. I'm if your father abused you emotionally and physically and your mother was in denial and did nothing to stop it, would that explain why I can't form healthy relationships, afraid to trust anyone? Mm. If you're speaking of yourself, Elizabeth, I just want to reach into the camera and give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. Yeah, that's a pretty big um, traumatic experience to witness in childhood. So. Uh, it is very possible you might have trust issues witnessing that. And it's going to take a tremendous amount of work and patience and, and a leap of faith. You know, relationships are a leap of faith. Yeah. So that's what just comes to mind there. I'm not an expert in any way to address this. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to give you a big hug too. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, oops. The beach is the worst place to meet men. That's where homeless men live. You know, Annie and excuse me, I live at the beach. I've met some really amazing human beings at the boardwalk, at the pier, at the... Um, so, so what bothers me about what you just shared is you're taking a tiny truth. There are some homeless people at the beach and you're making it a gigantic truth. I will tell you, Hermosa Beach, which is the beach next door to me, Manhattan Beach, these, the, the piers, the, the boardwalks, the, the strand, I, I, there are just, I, I, I see people walking their dog and they're having fun and you connect, by the way. I would say I love people with dogs because then you get a chance to pet them and you could talk to the owners and stuff like that. It's a great, by the way, people walking dogs are a great way to connect with other people. One of the exercises we did over the weekend at the Allison Armstrong event was just practicing connecting with other people. You know, most humans are bad at this. You know, I, I do this for a living, so I've been blessed. If you're not familiar with the book, folks, this is so old, it's ancient. How to Win and Influence Friends by Dale Carnegie. 
influence people, excuse me, how to win friend, how to, how to win friends and influence people. You know, most humans have terrible learning and relating skills. You know, everybody thinks they're the exception. I'm sorry, you're the rule. I know it feels rather intrusive that I say this to you, but I'm being blunt to everybody. I'm looking at the camera. Most everybody thinks they're the exception. When you can own it, when you own your shit, you're 80% of the way to inner peace. And I know you disagree with me, but go ahead, complain. That's, I love reading the comments too. It gives me a kick. All right. Sherry wants to remind everyone that Jonathan is passionate, effusive. I like it. Thank you. Um, yoga preacher, there are dark witches and there are light witches, not mad. I happen to know some light witches. <laughs> I've often thought I have a little bit of warlock in me. I really do think I have a little bit of a witch in me, a warlock in me. Uh, who remembers the show Bewitched? I had such a crush on Elizabeth Montgomery. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Who has questions? Let's keep going here. Uh, Gigi wants to say, I'm with you. My attitude has been off all week, just frustrated and done with the nonsense. I can relate. Real men do yoga. No one is good with yoga. <laughs> My class is exciting. Way to go, yoga preacher. All right, let's keep going. McCoy wanted to let me know that the full moon Saturday was in Taurus and it was a particularly par a partial lunar eclipse. I know, I know, I know. A good time for clearing. Oh, Sashana Susha, I'm going to butcher your name. You don't sound angry to me. You sound passionate. I think I am too. Sandy wants to say, I love the beach. I agree. I think it's the best place to live. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, Deza, is it possible to have a successful relationship with someone who has differing views on life? I'm used to having peaceful discussions, but this guy really places an emphasis on which of us is right. Now, yeah, it's interesting. Somebody recently posted a comment uh, on my YouTube channel and said, I really like some of your stuff, but there are some times I disagree with you, Jonathan. And you know, I wrote back, I'm happy you, there are things you don't agree with. Life would be boring if two people agreed on everything. Okay, with that said, you're not talking about a differing point of view. What you're really talking about is this person's point of view is, um, is rigid. They have a rigid way of thinking. So let me give you some examples, at least here in the United States. Some people who are Republicans, it's like the Republican and Democratic Party. They stick to their narrative, no matter what, they stick to the talking points. They are at two ends of the spectrum and they will not deviate. Why it's so fucked up here in the United States? Because they're not spending time in the middle, okay? And by the way, since 80% of us reside in the middle, it's kind of fucked for us here in the United States, our government way of being. They are, the, the, there's two parties and they stick to their side, okay? When a person is rigid in their thinking, it doesn't matter that their point of view is different than you. It's that they're rigid in their thinking. And you know what? I, I'm going to be blunt. I hate fucking rigid thinking. I hate people that have one narrative and they can't even bother to contemplate that there's another point of view that could be um, associated because... <laughs> There is no such thing as right or wrong. I mean, to the context is a point of view is just a point of view. It's not about being right. But the minute you make it about being right, you're being righteous. Anyway, does that help, Deza? So if this person is righteous in their point of view, then it fucking sucks and you probably should dump them. I, but don't quote me on that. Jada says, how do you feel about men staying friends with their ex-girlfriends, spending time with them while cultivating new relationships? So I got recently criticized because 
I am, I have a very dear friend. She's my ex relationship, my, or excuse me, a woman I was in relationship for six years that started 13 years ago. So we haven't been in relationship for half a dozen years, but we're still dear friends to each other. We don't call each other on the phone every day. In fact, we probably only communicate half a dozen or dozen times in a year. Okay. But I still consider her a friend, my ex-wife, um, mother of my children. You know, we, we, I, I don't consider her a friend, but I consider her friendly towards me. And now that Marie has exited my life, we have a friendly relationship. I don't have the need to call her and talk to her all the time. Okay. If someone has a need to constantly stay in contact with a previous lover, a need, then the question is, where is the need coming from? Is it an unhealthy need? I don't believe unhealthy friendships are good, but then you have to decide what is a friend? Okay. What is a friend? What does it mean to be a friend? Are they going to come and pick you up and take you to the airport if you need a ride at four in the morning? Is that the kind of friend they are? Or are they your therapist? Were you just talking to them on the phone because they're a therapist? Um, those are some of the things I'd want to um, get clarity on. Is that help with your question there, Deza? I, I, I hope I've given you some perspective on that. So thank you. Um, I like the movie Must Love Dogs. <laughs> Speaking of dogs, right? So um, I love that movie, but there's something in that movie where Chris, where, um, oh shoot, who's the lead actress in there? Um, God, Under the Tuscan Sun. Oh, what is her name? Oh, it's gonna come to me. Her father is played by Christopher Plummer and he has three girlfriends because his wife passed away and the women all know each other. I don't think that was a good, I know it's cute for the story, but I just don't think that was a good messaging. Let's look at that aspect of the story. Um, I, I just don't think that was good messaging. Anyway, uh, yoga preacher, you are a fire sign. We are loud and passionate people. I'm a Leo. In fact, I think I have four houses in Leo. I'm like a really Leo. <laughs> The world revolves around me. <laughs> you know, I've been accused of being narcissistic. It kind of cracks me up. So, um, and when I say accused, I've been accused by people who have never met me, have accused me of being narcissistic. I've never been with anyone I know. Any one of my friends would never characterize me that. But I've been accused by that by the YouTube universe out there. It fascinates me how a brief window in my life through this medium a person can assess my entire life it cracks me up can i be self-centric yeah can i be boisterous can i sometimes act flamboyant uh, you know in my communication absolutely does the world really revolve about me well and to some degree it's important that we put the ox oxygen mask on ourselves first being selfish is important. If we don't take care of ourselves, how can we take care of other people in our world? Um, but anyway, yes, I'm a fire sign. I guess I'm a fire sign. So whatever that means. I, I know it, but I don't know the stuff. Uh, let's keep going here. Oh, the okay, I don't know how to pronounce the, the uratati, whatever. I've been with my guy for home about two months. I spent a second weekend with him at his place. And, and when I got out of the shower, there was another woman hairbrush on the bathroom counter. Hmm. 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 Well, are you two in an exclusive monogamous relationship? Did you guys do my dating vows? Folks, before the penis ever goes inside the vagina, there's my dating vows. Have you ever heard the saying, women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment? Before sleeping with a guy, have the following conversation. I, Jonathan, agree to explore the, and both of you saying this to each other, I, Jonathan, agree to explore the process of getting to know you with the intent to declare something serious within the next three to six months. Make an agreement, 
Number two, I agree to be monogamous sexually while we're having regular sex together. It's an agreement. I agree to not actively seek to meet and date others while we're in the dating process, including taking down my dating profile. I agree to speak up if this isn't working for me versus ghosting, pulling back, or disappearing. And lastly, I agree to invest regular time in the process of getting to know you, which looks like spending two, three, four, five days a week together, days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. Establish your standard. 90% of people will bail on this. You women will bail on this because you're just as bad. You act like you want commitment, but you're just as scared. Many of you are. I understand why you're scared. You know, it's, you know, we're dealing with a lot of unknowns. It's because we jump into bed way too soon without really getting to know a person. That's our dilemma. So my guess is it's, you didn't ask a question, but I'm just spouting out my perspective. Oh, oh, so you you came back and said, I asked him about it and he said it was for his beard only. And then it goes on to say, the brush had a full of longer blonde hair. What do I do? You know, maybe his sister used it. I don't know. Um, you know, I would, I would really assess your relationship. How often do you see each other? Have you built trust together? Have you talked about commitment? I mean, what is the stuff you've done in this relationship to determine, are you in an exclusive monogamous relationship? If you're not, he's allowed to sleep with whoever he wants. You guys haven't made that level of commitment. He can do whatever he wants. Okay. <laughs> Turkish and Italian would make a cute baby, just saying. I'm past the baby wake, baby making days. Trust me on that one. All right, let's keep going here. You guys are having a whole conversation without me. All right, Jubilee. Was that maybe why he would leave when going got tough? Oh, well, you didn't. I don't see the question that goes with, I don't know what that relates to. Folks, if you have a question, write the word. Hey, by the way, why aren't any of you donating to the Connor Asley Scholarship Fund? There's a little dollar sign in there. Let's collect $50 tonight. Let's make some money for Connor. Come on. I've been putting a lot of effort here. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, well, folks, if you ain't going to ask me a question, I don't know what I'm going to say anymore. You guys are having your own conversation here. Ah, okay. I want to, I want to tell you something. I, I shot a video, a short this morning talking about people that say I'm busy with my children. You know, I want to address children for a moment. There is no doubt children are an important aspect of anyone's life who's a parent okay but the minute you engage in a relationship with someone and you're having regular sex together and you call each other boyfriend and girlfriend then the importance of that relationship should be on equal footing as the importance of all relationships in your life now what i mean to say is importance not above or below okay there are times when your children might be a priority and there are times your relationship needs to be a priority. But just remember, if you're married to someone and you have children, you treat everything as important as a need on a need basis. So the minute you don't treat somebody as important um, and you're putting your children continually ahead of somebody who's important in your life, it's going to damage the relationship, whether you're a man or a woman. I think people use excuses to avoid deeper intimacy. So I'm just drawing attention to this. It was a question that came up and I wanted to draw attention to the fact that a lot of people, they use their children as an excuse to avoid deeper intimacy in relationship. Men and women alike do this. So just want to 
bring that to your awareness and you're welcome to ask me any question related to that. By the way, I want to thank Elizabeth for the $4.99 super sticker. We are $45 away from our goal of $50. <laughs> uh, Lisa Cunningham wants to say a few men become very wrapped up in their kids, especially daughters. If he tells you how important they are, be weary, ask deeper questions. Yes, there is something known as covert incest or emotional incest. This is true for men. This is true for women as well, where their child, oftentimes the opposite sex child becomes their emotional support person. I literally met a woman who I thought her, her real boyfriend was her son. I mean, the way they were together continually. I have witnessed men who use their daughters. They're literally, their daughters are a, such a princess that they have they abandon really good relationships, really good relationships because they put their daughter ahead of everyone. That is not healthy. And they, like they'll be in the middle of sex, they get a phone call from their daughter. Oh, hey baby, you wanna talk? Let me get off the, let me pull my penis out of this vagina and go talk to you. I mean, I've heard stories like that. So I'm just saying um, covert incest, emotional incest. Hey, I want to thank John is in the house, a $10 super sticker. That means we are only $35 away from our goal of $50. Thanks for the love, John. You, I think you said that you missed out on uh, uh, an Apple podcast to be at Watch Mine. I hope you found value in what I'm sharing tonight. So I appreciate the love. Uh, um, let's keep going here. Hey, Annette just gave us a $10 super sticker. Yay, so we're $25 away. Sorry for the, um, so we're $25 away. Did my computer freeze up? <laughs> By the way, Sashana, how you get the super sticker? There's a little uh, chat, uh, there's a little dollar sign in the chat box. That's how you uh, do that. And uh, Annette Paul just gave us a $10 super sticker. Thank you so much. There you go. So what else do you want to talk about? What questions do you have of me? Someone throw me a good question. Um, yeah, sorry. It looks like I have a weak internet connection right now and it's freezing up. Probably might be a good time to log off. So coming back to respect uh, and such, folks, it's time to really step into individual self-respect and learning how to regulate your emotions. That's how we gain respect from other human beings, when we have self-respect and we have a capacity to regulate our own emotions. Um, amongst other things, make sure your actions consistently match your words. Make sure you have victor consciousness. Make sure you know how to do what I call fight fair, which means you listen to your other person's point of view without being right, like I talked about with that previous um, question that came in. You have empathy, and that means you genuinely care about the other person's feelings in commensurate to your own feelings. And lastly, transparency. Ladies, we can't read your mind. You got to start telling us what you want because that helps us. Help, help me help you by being more succinct. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Uh, oh, well, we'll take one more question. <laughs> I was just about to do my sign off. How can you tell early on if someone likes you? Hopefully somebody says the words, I like you. <laughs> um, they show interest. I mean, come on, you know, they show interest. You know, if someone... Listen, the thing is, fearful people might like you, but if that, you know what, you know, humans got to grow balls. Okay. If you like, like folks, you know what? I mean, I I'm here to say, if there's any woman interested in me, she should drop the hanky. You know, we can't, you know, don't be afraid to take a risk in your life. And I'm offering the same for you. I'm, I'm offering everyone here, take a risk in life. You, you know, you don't, you're not going to lose anything. You're never rejected. You're only rejected if you reject yourself. That's the only time you're ever rejected is when you disconnect from self. 
So don't be afraid to speak up and tell someone you like them. Um, but how do you mostly know someone likes you? They say, oh, by the way, Diane Lane, that was the name. Thank you for posting that. Thank you. This must be out of whack here. All right, folks, I hope I helped with that one, uh, Elizabeth. Hey, folks, we're going to wrap up tonight. Looks like we're having some glitches in here. I hope you found value in our conversation. If you did, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell. Check out all the links below to schedule a discovery call with me, to follow me on Instagram, all that good stuff. It's Monday Night Football. I don't know who's playing, but I'm going to go watch some football right now. And I hope you found value in this conversation. All right, we're going to wrap up this video as I always do. First, I've given myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank Sherry and Susan and McCoy and Jubilee and Magic and uh, Leafs and Sterling and Shannon and Sandy and uh, Image. Um, Image says, do you have a twin that wants to live in North Idaho? I do somewhere. I'm sure there's a twin of me out there. And I hope he'd want to live there. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, let's see who else. We got Jubilee. I said that. Terry, Annette, uh, Liz, Babbling, Sherry. Uh, John, thank you for the love. Everyone, big hugs. Thanks so much. Be well. Bye now.